What's going on people? This is your boy Theo back with another episode of Shape Now. Now this week I talk about R. Kelly. Now the docu-series Surviving R. Kelly has been aired over in America. Now you can't um, at the moment view it over here but you probably can find it online. Um, and there's been snippets and clips and all that stuff. But it goes into detail into which how he's been um, ruining the lives of young women, how he's been molesting them, how he's been having sex with them, and how he's been keeping them against their will. So I talk about that, plus what I think about their marriage on, um, well, his marriage um, with Aaliyah, and my whole take on the whole thing. So, uh, stay tuned, hope you like this episode, like, subscribe, and share this thing. So, the, the humble beginnings of R. Kelly. Now, he, um, was, he grew up in Chicago. Um, he was raised by um, his mom, primarily. Um, his dad left him at an early age, and he went to to church with his mom learned how to sing he couldn't read and he couldn't write yet still he's been able to develop his talent for music from a young age um and what was interesting during his childhood that he was molested by a family member i believe and he also was exposed to sex at a young age now think about that for a second um all of that stuff it plays on the mind and from what I explain next it's clear with what's gone on here as he is a very very troubled and dangerous man okay so um, R Kelly as he got bigger um, as a star he would go into shopping centers to pick up girls now some of those girls actually had dreams about being a singer and would hope that he would actually help them to um, get onto the music scene um, whether or not one seen professionally or whether or not they're trying to you know get them on stage on a theater all that sort of thing um, but that wasn't that way he would bring them to hotels he would bring them to his own house and one thing led to another and you know the girls end up doing sexual favors on him and he does sexual favors on them and it's just so horrifying to even think about it. it's just mad and that's how he was able to produce his songs literally Everything that you told, that you heard was literally true. That's crazy. Really, really like, oh, oh, God, it's just mad. Anyway, he's met Aaliyah, and he met her at twelve years old, and uh, um, they were close. Aaliyah was not how she um, how she was growing up. Um, like how you actually viewed her and everything, how you remember her. She was a very um, girly girl, shy. Um, you wouldn't even think that. But then um, R. Kelly got to meet her and then they, uh, he gave her a look and worked on her. Like she had a bubbly personality and everything. But yeah, she gave he gave him a look and the, her a sound and... Um, R. Kelly made her into the star that she is. You know, I can I can say that. Then they got married. Aaliyah was only eighteen, and and um, R. Kelly was twenty seven. Now, how did that happen? Um, there was a lot of forgery. They forged the paperwork so that this could happen. And it wasn't even a big wedding either. It was one of those kind of small. It was a very, very small 
um, things. It's a bit like when you go to Las Vegas and you um, get yourself, you can get yourself married legally and quickly. It's one of those things. Um, yeah, so two years later, sorry, not two years later, a couple of months later, um, the marriage was annulled. The family was actually torn apart. They were absolutely furious as to which how this happened. Um, one of the girls that was on the docu series um, went into accounts that um, Aaliyah was having sex with R. Kelly on a tour bus on one of the bunks. And she was only 15 at the time. Wow. It's, it's it's mad how it all came to be, to be honest. But um, that's what happened. <laughs> uh, I, I don't get him. Don't get him at all. Okay, one of this, the, the most disgusting things that I've heard um, during the documentary series um, was when Sparkle spoke about her, her experience with R. Kelly. Now, R. Kelly um, got to working with her and um, the biggest hit that she's got is um, Be Careful. It was a duet and basically it was entirely R. Kelly's idea and and subsequently he didn't allow her to speak to anybody you know nobody was allowed to talk to her nobody and then she would go out with a way to try and speak to people um and then she introduced her niece to r kelly um rather regrettably um in her words um and she was there recording whilst her niece was there in the room um and then a few days later uh she got dropped off to the recording studio by r kelly's team she wasn't even aware of that that she would be there or whatever she wasn't even aware but her niece was there by herself she was only 13 she was so surprised to learn of that and then came the sex tape, the infamous sex tape, and on it was her niece with R. Kelly, and R. Kelly peed in her mouth. I couldn't believe it. What I've heard anyway, I couldn't hear, but I couldn't believe it. I didn't see the, the video myself or anything, but I can't believe, or I can't believe that at all to hear it it's so horrific and and sparkle's career diminished because of it trying to protect her her niece trying to stand up for her family because her family really was torn apart from all this I don't know what to say, it's just, I feel sorry for what she had to go through, I feel sorry for her niece, wow. So ends episode 37, now I just wanted to take the time out to say, um, the women that appeared on the show, even though I didn't mention them or anything, um, I only mentioned a few, but um, the people that I didn't mention, they have to be applauded. They were brave to do so. And I uh, hope um, that for the rest of their lives, they can continue to be the strong women that um, that I feel that they can be. Um, and I hope that um, they can I don't think they can ever put this behind them, but I hope that, you know, they can continue to help out other women that's gone through all this stuff. I heard that there's a surge in um, P 
people coming out, more and more people coming out, speaking about um, not just this problem, but any sort of problem. Um, it gets an awareness going. It's getting a movement going. Um, so it has to be commended on that. As for R. Kelly and his team, I hope they go to jail. Um, but I don't know if that's going to happen or not, which will be um, a damn shame. But it's it's sad. Now we know that Spotify um, and and um, Pandora um, are the latest um, streaming music um, websites to pull his catalog. We don't know if that's gonna um, if that's gonna hurt it a bit more. Um, Kiki Palmer actually said it best that you know he's been given this talent and then he literally slaps God in the face with it and. Yeah, it's it's a it's testament to see it's it's, it's <sighs> I really really am angry about this whole thing that it's happened for so long. But yes, as people were to blame for it because we're the ones that supported him. We knew that um, he was married to R. Kelly. In no, sorry, Aaliyah, and. Um, you know, we allowed this thing to happen and we didn't put a stop to this. We're just to blame for this as well. I, 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 and and at the end of the day, this thing shouldn't happen. Now, people would then end up talking to us about, oh, yeah, Elvis, Elvis met, uh, met um, Priscilla and they got married at a young age and everything. But but that then it was different. This is This is a lot worse than that. You're taking, you're taking um, the the innocence away from being a child because they they they've been children. They're, these are children, you know. And I just don't understand how as to which why this has gone on for so long, and nothing's really been done about it. You know, whether it's our fault, his fault, and everything, this should have been stopped. Even then, when the sex tape stopped, it, like. You know, why didn't the record companies didn't say anything about it? Why? I don't get it. You know, why didn't they say to him, look, listen, I'm going to cut your tie with you and everything. But this is the thing, how it all works. When you have money, when you have power, it's just mad. If that, if, if, if I was, also I should say as well, um, by the way, is that, um, I know that there's been um, a couple of parents that's been looking for for their um, their daughters um, that was on the show, and um, I just wanted to quickly say that even though I commend them for trying to do what they could legally to get them out and everything, what I would have done would have been totally illegal because um, it would have been totally illegal because um, I would have actually got an axe and chop down that door and I would have got my daughter out. I'm not a parent. Hope they hope to God one day I will be. But I'm not a parent. Um I would have got them out. But I do commend them for trying to, you know, um to help them to get out of the children because I do feel sorry that they've gone through all of this stuff. It's sad how it's going it, how how they how this is panned out for them but I, I I I'm just as I'm just as shot if anything I'm angry more than shot about this whole thing but I don't know it's sad but I don't know what to say um I don't know what to say but listen um I can I'm not going to dribble on about this anymore uh, please um, let me know what you guys think about this week's episode. I'll be back next week. Um, in the meantime, though, peace out.